Hi there everybody, um, I've decided I'm going to do a small series of short videos on how to use the RSBA1 software from ICOM. Uh, a lot of people kind of dismiss this software of not being any use. Um, I find it quite good um, if you spend a bit of time playing with it and learning how it works and how it functions it's actually quite good. So. Um, when you have the software downloaded and installed on your machine and make sure you have all the uh, updates done um, without it connected to the radio to, to define your settings and get your connection to the radio you need it in this state where nothing is highlighted and there's nothing showing on the display here so if we go into the connect set and um, you can see here on this menu it gives you a list of all the radios and the uh, IC7300 is on the top with the firmware version of 1.20 which is the latest uh, version so we just click OK on that so now your COM port setting uh, will be uh, whatever it is on your machine for the radio and you can find that by going into your device manager and you'll see the uh, USB to UART bridge and whatever COM port that's on, you put it here. Uh, your baud rate, you want it at the maximum of 115,200, which is to make the scope work. Uh, default CIV address of 94, and this one here, E0. Uh, these are defaults, so they should be OK. Um, so we click OK on that. And so to get it to connect to the radio, we hit that button there. And you can see everything is up. Scope is running. Uh, the basic settings, you can see some of the buttons are grayed out here, like this one here, this one here, 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 etc. The buttons that are grayed out means that those functions are not available on the radio that you're using. Um, simple things like to change the settings on the likes of the noise blanker or the noise reduction if you just hover the mouse over it and right click and that will bring up this menu and if you hover your mouse over the virtual knob and use your mouse wheel you can see there it it changes the setting so you can do that you can right click or you can go up here to view and go into uh, operating panels and you can open them this way I'll just open another one uh, CW so and you can do what you, you want to do and then just close them uh, I always have the transmit step which is here up and down and you can see the little notch over the relevant number on the display and if you just put your mouse over that you can very quickly um, run up and down the band if you want to do finer work you can change it so the wrong way and you can see there it's a bit finer and you can actually go finer again and again but I find that um, having it with the uh, and just putting all these back to zero because if you don't it just kind of messes everything up have it here over this setting it's it's actually quite good uh, simple little settings as well like your passband and your notch filter uh, you can actually right click those as well and it'll open a little menu and you can you can change the width of, of the notch filter uh, change band it's fairly self-explanatory 160 80 40 30 20 17 15 12 10 and 6 so you can run through them all or you can just go into general receive mode there and you can uh, do whatever it is you want to do so uh, let's see uh, on later videos, I'll, I'll cover these functions up the top here for like your voice here uh, memory functions 
and the CW Kier. Now there's another menu there, your set mode of your uh, accessory port, USB port inputs and things like that. A lot of this stuff you don't really have to do anything with it once you get the radio connected to the software. The default settings are okay. Um, you can change your RF power from here with the mouse. Uh, you can change your RF gain. Uh, volume. And if you hold it just on the outer ring, it'll do the squelch. You can see the squelch rise there. Not that we use squelch that much on uh, SSB. So we'll uh, leave it at that for this video. And uh, we'll come back to you with another video in the uh, near future of how to use the the different settings. And just on the scope there, while I'm looking at it, you can... Um, there's settings on the scope if you go in here and you can see how I have the scope done with the colors and the waveform line to match the radio. Now there is a little bit of latency between the radio and the software, which you would expect um, as it's traveling over the USB cable, but by and large it's quite usable. Uh, it's not going to give you the same kind of display as what you'll see on a flex or whatever, but for what it is, it's uh, it's pretty good, you know, and you have the option of remote control as well. So uh, we'll leave it there for now, and thank you for watching. Please uh, comment and subscribe, and we'll catch you again very soon. This is George, EI7KO. Bye-bye.